This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing all the gear that I use on a daily basis to produce all the content I share online. And with that said, let's get into the bag that I use primarily, which is the Low Pro Whistler. Now, a funny little aside to this is I bought this Low Pro Whistler 450 in Whistler back in 2017. So useless information for you guys, but I find it kind of funny. Now I have two camera bags. I use the Low Pro Whistler 450 and this bag from Owner. Now I don't actually know the name of this bag, which doesn't really matter because they don't sell it anymore. I bought this six years ago and I still use it every single day. And I bought this five years ago. This is kind of my everyday carry bag. This is the thing that I, I use to go to coffee shops. This is what I use when I'm traveling. This is what I use when I'm sort of just wanting to carry one camera, one lens, my MacBook, stuff like that. And it's sort of super simple, portable, and very discreet. I don't have to worry about walking around looking like I'm carrying thousands of dollars worth of camera gear on my back. Whereas this bag is kind of my, I guess my professional bag. It's the bag that I use when I'm going on commercial shoots, when I'm shooting weddings or when I used to shoot weddings. And it's the bag that I use when I'm traveling say interstate or internationally and I need to take a lot of gear with me. I think the best thing you can do is just get two bags. <laughs> get a bag that you use as kind of your daily driver that you use for carrying your gear when you want to go to a coffee shop and work or you want to go for a quick shoot or you want to go for a shoot with friends and then get a bag that you're using professionally that's more I guess useful for what we actually need it for which is carrying an enormous amount of gear and keeping it safe. Let's talk about the cameras that I use. So I only own <laughs> three cameras. I have the EOS R5, which I'm shooting on right now. I then have my DJI Mavic 2 Pro, and I also have uh, a GoPro Hero 10. And the reason why I only really have one camera is because I rent a lot of gear. Now, I've always sort of believed that you don't need to own the high-end cameras yourself. I've just never seen the point. It's just becomes kind of a, a never-ending pit that you throw your money into trying to own the gear or trying to have the gear necessary to shoot it when you could just rent the gear when you need it and not have to worry about insuring it, not having to worry about pricing it, not having to worry about storing it, protecting it, all the things that add up when you own an enormous amount of gear. I find it so much easier to own one camera, a bunch of lenses, and then rent if I need it. Moving on to the lenses that I use. So I own four lenses myself. I have the 16-35 2.8 from Canon, which is their EF mounted lens, not RF mounted lens, which is what you're looking at right now. I would personally prefer to have a prime lens, like a 24 or a 35, but for me, having a 16-35 is just perfect for just about everything I need. It's super, super versatile. It's great for photography and filmmaking. And for me or someone who likes to own less gear, I find this is kind of the perfect all-rounder option if you are you know a filmmaker and photographer creating your own content for social media like I am I then own the 85 millimeter 1.4 uh, this in my humble opinion and it is a very humble opinion but this in my humble opinion is the best lens that Canon sells uh, best specialty lens because obviously you can't do everything on this lens but for me this is a staple in your kit if you are doing any sort of film work because it's just an unbelievably beautiful lens. I'm going to be overlaying a few shots that I've shot with this lens now. It just, it always delivers. It always delivers on what I need and always just looks incredible. I then own the EF 50mm 1.2. Now this is a bit of an old lens and I, I personally like it a lot because it has a little bit more of like a vintage look. Now <laughs> I know this is not a vintage lens but maybe the past owner, because I bought it secondhand, maybe the past owner dropped it or something because when I stopped down to 1.2 it ends up with this like super soft glowy look which is 
probably a fault of the lens and not a characteristic of a brand new version of this lens, but I really, really like it. And then also for shooting interviews and portraits, this thing is a no brainer. It's kind of the perfect lens for that because it's super flattering to the face when you shoot it on a full frame lens. 50 mil is kind of the perfect focal length for shooting people and shooting faces. It makes them look very natural rather than looking super compressed or super wide. Um, so yeah, this is another perfect lens for me. And lastly, I have my 70 to 200 2.8 from Canon. This is only the Mark II, so this is outdated by two editions. There's the Mark III and then there's the RF version of this lens. But again, this is a super versatile lens that I use mostly for photography. I actually find myself using this less and less nowadays, so I may sell it in the future. But back when I was doing a lot of landscape photography and traveling a lot, this thing was kind of the stuck on my camera full time lens. The next thing I wanted to talk about are the filters that I use on a daily basis. And they are the variable ND from Polar Pro and the Tiffin Promist black filter in the one fourth density option. Now, the variable ND is basically the thing on my lens right now that's exposing the image properly and keeping me at a 180 degree shutter angle. Now that just basically means I'm keeping my shutter speed at twice my frame rate and that's what keeps a natural motion blur in my shots and allows me to expose my shots properly without having to stop down, decrease my ISO or go and change my frame rate to something which will create an unnatural motion motion blur. Now Polar Pro actually already sell a mist option of this filter, but in my opinion, I don't think you should go with that option. I personally recommend the Tiffin Black Pro Mist filter in either the one half, one fourth or one eighth density options. I personally own the one fourth density option. I think this is perfect for just about everything that I do. I'm shooting on it right now, which is creating this sort of flary, glary, sort of beautiful effect. And it softens my skin, softens the entire image and makes it just sort of look a little bit more dreamy. I'm gonna overlay a shot right now without the Tiffin Black Pro Mist on my camera to see what it looks like without it. Compared to what it looks like now with the filter on, it's not for everyone. It's a bit of a stylistic choice, but in my opinion, I like to shoot with it on most of the time. So I would personally recommend getting the Polar Pro Variable ND and then getting the Tiffin Black Pro Mist filter, which are both linked down in the description below. Now, alongside the filters that I use, I also have these two things, which are step up rings. Now these are the single best purchase you can make in your kit. These essentially allow you to buy one or two filters and then attach them to every single one of your lenses. Now, if you've got more than one lens, you know that they don't share the same circumference across all different lenses. Some of them come in 72 millimeters, 82 millimeters, 77, and you wanna be able to attach basically whatever filter you have to your lenses. So for me, I have this one, which is a 72 to 82 millimeter. I then have the 77 to 82 millimeter. And with these, I then buy 82 millimeter filters and then I'm able able to attach every single one of my filters to every single one of my lenses without having to own more than one of the same filter. Now, before I get into talking about the gear that is not in my camera bag that I use to film these videos, I wanna talk about an essential part of editing these videos, which is where the sponsor of today's video comes in, which is Epidemic Sound. been a freelance filmmaker for almost seven years now and over that time I've gotten the opportunity to use just about every single music licensing service available and in my opinion Epidemic Sound is the single best option for both professional filmmakers and content creators like myself. Not only is their library of music and sound effects that they have available incredible but their pricing structure is unbeatable especially for someone like me who needs music not only for YouTube, Instagram and TikTok but I also need it for my professional work and I don't want a pricing structure that's going to have me paying for something for my professional work and then paying again for my YouTube videos. I've been in situations in the past where I've been paying for two subscriptions to the same service simply because my YouTube channel fell into a different category or a different licensing structure than my business did. Whereas with Epidemic Sound, everything I do is under the one subscription and I never have to worry about having the appropriate license for the content I'm creating. I can just have it all under one umbrella and never have to worry about it again. So I've teamed up with Epidemic Sound to bring you 
you guys 50% off their personal annual plan. If you sign up today with my code NOSKI50, you'll get 50% off that plan and you'll still get your 30 day free trial. You've still got those 30 days to decide whether you like it or not, worry free and you can cancel anytime. And if at the end of that, you like it as much as I expect you will, then you'll still get that 50% off their yearly plan. There's literally no reason why you shouldn't take this opportunity. So if you're interested in upgrading the music and sound design in your videos, hit the link in the top line of the description and thank you so much to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring today's video. Now let's talk about the gear that doesn't go in my camera bag that I use to film these videos. Proportionately, I've invested a lot more of my money into the audio and lighting of my videos. That's just because I'm a little bit of a nerd for audio and lighting and I personally find a lot more enjoyment in investing my money into the lighting and audio rather than the cameras and lenses. That's just my personal preference. So before I get into any of the gear that I use, please know that a lot of it is very, very overkill for YouTube. So let's first talk about microphones. Now, the microphone that you're listening to right now is the Sennheiser MKH416, which is an absolute weapon of a microphone for anything voiceover, interview, talking head related. It just has an incredible ability to pick up both the low and the high end of people's voices without capping off either or over pronouncing either end. And in my opinion, produces the best reproduction of someone's voice in camera. I then record all of that audio into my Zoom H8. Now, the only reason I got the Zoom H8 is because it was on sale where I bought it for and was actually cheaper than the H6. If you've ever watched any of my videos and you notice the sound design or that you can hear me typing on my keyboard or you can hear me sit down or walking or whatever it is, if you've ever watched those videos and you wonder how I do it, I actually record it with the microphone built into the Zoom H8. All I have to do is position the microphone slightly out of shot and then record that audio and sync it up with the camera and post and this is a super easy way to level up the quality of your videos. When I'm then recording voiceover audio, I have my Shure SM7B microphone, which is the industry standard for podcasts and voiceover audio. I bought this a few years ago when I started doing my podcast and started doing YouTube more consistently. I used to hold that microphone in all of my videos before I got the Sennheiser and I just found it to be a great option whenever I need to record things or record voiceovers or podcasts or whatever I need on the run. I then have the Rode Wireless Go 2, which is this great little microphone setup that is super, super easy to use. With these, all you have to do is turn both on, pair them once, and then they're permanently paired and everything's done. It's just a very, very easy setup if you want good audio on the go without having to worry about carrying clunky microphones or anything like that. And last but not least, I wanna talk about the lights that I use to film these videos. So I have the Aperture 300D Mark II paired with the Aperture Light Dome. Now this is a very overkill setup for YouTube if you were just doing YouTube, but I just really like to have the power available to me. Obviously you don't need a 300 watt light to shoot a talking head situation all the time, but there are some circumstances like right now with that window in the background, unless I had a light powerful enough to overpower that background window, that would be completely blown out in the shot and I would have to rely on overexposing my image for my skin tones. Whereas with a light that's powerful enough to expose both at the same time, I'm able to have a really balanced shot like the shot that you're looking at right now. I then for my accent lights, I use the Godox TL60 tube lights. These are a really, really cheap option for tube lights and they offer really, really powerful but also really accurate lighting. Something you need to consider whenever you're buying lights is how accurate the reproduction of color actually is. Sometimes you have lights that say they're RGB, but the color reproduction is really, really off. So you end up with weird yellows that look green and oranges that kind of look more green than orange. And you end up with lights that kind of look mushy. Whereas with these lights, they're super, super accurate, which is why they produce the color that you're looking at right now. And that's that. That's all of the gear that I use for my content creation. Like I said, I tend to lean more on the, I guess, light side of gear that I have or the gear that I use day to day. I just don't see the point in having a bloated creative process because of having too much gear. I also don't think it's necessary, like I said, to own everything. You can always rent something. Whereas when you buy something, you then have to use it. And I've had so many situations where I've bought a piece of equipment that I thought was necessary only to sell it months later after never using it. So make sure that when you are investing your money in gear, try to 
optimize the amount of bang for buck you're getting when you invest. Try to think about what's one piece of gear that I can buy that's going to give me the most benefit rather than something that's a, a nice to have or a want to have. Uh, that's just my opinion. That's the way I've always sort of seen video and photo production. I don't think it's necessary to own everything. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps me out an enormous amount. And with that all said and done, I'll see you guys next time.